Welcome into the studio. I have a 35 point checklist in front of me to score a 3D printer. Now, why do we want to score 3D printers? Well, it's easy. The industry is moving so fast right now that you as a consumer and me as a content creator, it is difficult to keep things straight. So this checklist starts with the unboxing, moves into the core functions of the 3D printer, and then goes into its additional features, assigning each one of those items a score that we can add up at the end. Now that's really important because this is going to allow us to score each individual machine and compare those with one another and it's gonna help us with value and pricing because if we have multiple printers with similar scores but vastly different prices, it's gonna help you get the best value. In the comments below, you're gonna find a link to this score sheet and I'd like for you to score it along with me and we'll see at the end if we score the same. This is the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini and I did a video on this last summer but we never got around to actually scoring this machine until now. The unboxing experience for the A1 Mini is pretty good. It comes virtually fully assembled, minus, uh, I guess you gotta put the spool holder on and uh, in the little filament uh, ejector here on the side. Other than that, the machine's ready to go out of the box. So as far as the score with the max out of five, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give that a three. And the reason you'd say, well, if you said it's pretty good and it wasn't a four or five, I'd say, well, unless someone's gonna show up and pull it out of the box, white glove service and assemble it for me, then there's no way anybody's getting a five. Now aesthetics, that's really an important part of user experience, right? You wanna buy something, you want it to look good. Um, I think that the A1 Mini looks good. I think it looks a little bit sterile, like it belongs in like maybe a clinic or a hospital. Um, so I would say aesthetics wise, I would, I would probably give this machine a three as well, out of five. Now bed leveling, you don't bed level on this, it's automatic. So I think bed leveling, that's a five, right? One, zero out of five. How about offset for Z? Well, you don't really do it on this machine. So zero out of five, it gets a five. Now included models. This is really important to me. I think 3D printers should show up at people's homes and they should be loaded with default models on the machine. I think that they should be loaded with practical prints, things that people could immediately start printing. Things like, like door stops or paper towel holders or chip clips. Those types of things should be automatically on the machine so that the moment somebody gets the machine, they unbox it, they go to print something, that they have a wide selection of things to print. And I'm not talking one, two, 10. I'm talking 25 or 50 different things that should be on this machine to get printing. Things that you would share with your neighbor, right? That you'd print and go, hey neighbor, check this out. My 3D printer's awesome. Here's something I printed. Those are the types of things that, that you'd like to see on a machine when it shows up. This A1 Mini, doesn't show up with a giant amount. I think it's probably about an average amount. So included models, zero out of five. I think I'm probably gonna give it about a two, which is gonna be probably pretty common with the printers that we look at. The first print on this machine is absolutely fantastic. And you're gonna be looking at B-roll, but I'm not gonna say it's perfect because maybe we haven't seen a perfect print or maybe they don't exist. Maybe it's like a unicorn. So I'm gonna say that the first print on this machine um, from a zero to a 10, I'm gonna go ahead and probably say that the first print on this machine is probably, let's say it's a seven. That's, and that's pretty high. I think eight or nine would probably be the most we'd ever see. Now speed, this machine, the A1 Mini, prints up to 500 millimeters per second. And the scoring maximum for this is 10. And I'm gonna give it a point for every 100 milliseconds. So if this is 500 millimeters per second printing, it's gonna get a score of five. Now the build surface on this one is a flexible, textured PEI sheet and that's what came on it. Now, is that special? No, I think this is about average now. So build surface, I'm gonna go ahead and just put it out of a five. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna say that it's a three. I don't think that it's anything super special and it kind of leaves room for some pretty cool stuff to come in the future. Now the heated build plate on this machine gets up to 80C which we're used to 100C is kind of being the normal average build plate temperature that's pretty common. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have to rate this out of five. I'm gonna give this a two for only being 80C on the build plate. Now the extruder, one out of five. This particular extruder, you'd have to say it's probably an average everyday extruder, except this particular extruder has a lot of sensors in it. Sensors that help uh, with uh, flow uh, calibration and anti-jamming. So. Normally it would be a three for standard extruder, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give it a four because of the extra sensors. Now the hot end in this one is a special hot end. It goes up to a maximum temperature of 300 C, but this one has a quick release hot end. So out of five, I would say, eh, we'll give it, we'll give it a four for being a quick release hot end. And again, the nozzle temperature up to 300 C, which is about standard. So let's give it a 
three for the score. Now the nozzle, you don't get points for having a nozzle, right? All printers have a nozzle. So if it's brass and it's a nozzle, I mean, that doesn't really do anything, but it'd have to be more of a fancy nozzle to get some extra points. Now it is a stainless nozzle. So out of a max score of two, I'm gonna give it a one. Linear motion, this is really important. And the A1 is rails all the way around. Now the linear motion score is a max of 10. And the way I've kind of been doing this in my head is two points per axis. So that would be about six because it's rails all the way around, six out of 10. And it would have to be pretty fancy, giant super rails or dual rails or something like that to get some special points. Parts cooling, this has a pretty decent parts cooling fan, um, but it is a single fan feeding both sides. It's not a curtain of air like in an X1 carbon. So let's just say three out of five. Now the firmware on this A1 Mini is custom and it's pretty decent, right? So the, the interface is great. Um, the integration with the system is really good. So I'd have to say out of five, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a three. Now the user interface, we just kind of touched on that a little bit. It's a small screen. I'm talking like a couple of inches at the most. And if you got big fingers, it can be hard to use. So out of five, I'd go ahead and rate this interface. Uh, a three would be a decent touchscreen interface. This is kind of tiny. So I'm gonna give it a two. Now noise, really important to a lot of people, but it is the only metric on my checklist that's on the negative scale. So I only take points away for machines being loud. So if you have an ultra quiet 3D printer, I'm just gonna give you zero points and I'm gonna take away for, for any noise. Now this machine does a pretty good job with noise. It's one of the quietest machines that Bamboo offers. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave it at a, oh, we'll say a minus two for noise. Now other machines like the Two Trees SK-1 was really, really loud. So when we ultimately score that one, that one's probably gonna be like a minus six um, or even worse, because that machine, I couldn't even record video. I couldn't even live stream with that machine sitting next to me. It was so loud. How's it looking? Are you and I close on score? Are we? I don't know, keep it up. We're, we're about halfway through. All right, spool holder. Now you don't get a point for having a spool holder because every printer should just have a spool holder. But I think if you're gonna go above and beyond, kind of like the Prusa Mini, how it's like a separate spool holder, they can be like open and closed depending on the size of the spool. Um, I think if it's a large spool holder that can handle, you know, two or three or five kilogram spools, or even something uh, like the Raise 3D machines where the spool holder is internal to the machine, well, then that gets you some points. So the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, basic spool holder, zero points. Power loss recovery. Yep, has power loss recovery, so we give it a one, because that's kind of the max. That's just like, yes or no. Belt tensioning. Now that's pretty important. So keeping belts nice and tensioned on a 3D printer is super important. And making it easily accessible, that's also important. The belts on this particular machine are not that easily accessible. I'd have to probably go ahead and say that this, as far as belt tensioning, I'm gonna give this a one. Filament runout sensor. Yep, it absolutely has a filament runout sensor. I mean, that's pretty easy. It gets a one. Lights on this printer. Yes, it does have lights. So we'll go ahead. And I think they're pretty basic lights, right? It just has one here. It just has the one light right here. So we'll just give it uh, out of lights, one to three. We'll give it a one. Uh, camera. It does have a camera. But like I said, I wish they would put more sophisticated cameras on these machines. So out of a max score of two, it just has a really basic like time-lapse style camera. So it's only getting a one. Offline file transfer is really important. That's, a, that's something that's overlooked by a lot of people. A lot of people love the cloud features, but a lot of people want to keep these things disconnected from networks and they want to do it offline. So this one has micro SD, which is the worst kind of file transfer. I'm not a big fan of the micro SD cards. So when it comes to offline file transfer, a one, two, or three, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it a one. Now network connectivity. This has Wi-Fi connectivity, not ethernet or anything like that. So of a max score of two, right? So that would be Wi-Fi one, ethernet would be another point. We give it a one. Bamboo machines have some of the best remote management in the market and that happens by way of Bamboo Studio. And it can also be done through the Bamboo Handy app. So that's really important. So when it comes to remote management of a max score of three, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I don't think it gets any better than that with Bamboo Studio. You can do everything with the printer and uh, with the app. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna award that a three. Now enclosure, that's a big deal when it comes to 3D printers. So you have things like the X1 Carbon back here that are fully enclosed. And uh, I don't know, if I had to score this one back here, I'd probably score this at like a six, probably. But anyway, we're not, uh, we're not scoring that today. No enclosure, gets a big old zero. Accelerometers, 
This is key, right? So we have a lot of 3D printers coming out with uh, input shaping. And some of these companies are not including accelerometers or they include one accelerometer in a bag and you gotta attach it to each axis and then uh, run your input shaping. Now Bamboo, they just included an accelerometer on the necessary axes. So we're gonna go ahead out of a score of five, I'm gonna say, well, I think, I don't know. We'll say, we'll say three, right? Cause it's kind of the current normal standard for accelerometers. Now MMU capability is big. So that is multi-material unit, right? So that means it's the Bamboo AMS system, right? So you have the AMS system here and the A1 Mini is, uh, has the optional AMS light that comes with it. That is a fantastic system for adding multi-colors to this machine. And right now it doesn't really get any better than that. So out of a MMU capability up to eight, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a five because right now we don't really get anything, we don't have anything better. And I'm leaving room for some really cool MMU systems that maybe we haven't seen yet. Now, cable management. Looking at this particular machine, cable management wise, this up here is kind of messy. Um, I really wish there, you know, there's some better way to do this. This, there's better ways to do this, and it's here. But uh, cable management, I would say it's, it's necessary. Out of five, I would probably say, I'm gonna go ahead and give cable management on this. I'm just gonna give it an average, and we're gonna say three. It's not bad, but there's room for improvement. Motors and drivers. Now this is kind of important. If this had a full gantry on the X, then we would include or give it a point for having dual Z. Now, because this doesn't, and it can only be basically single Z, then there's not really a way to give it a point for that. However, we can give it a point for the, uh, the silent drive system that Bamboo has put in that, which is a little bit fancy, and we don't really see it on a, uh, a lot of machines. So this has an update to it that basically makes this machine virtually silent in its movement, So, which is pretty darn cool. So I think out of five, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give that a three. Now, build quality. Build quality, injection molded, uh, we have machined parts. The machine is really nice looking and it's sturdy, it's solid, it's one piece. So build quality out of 10, I'd have to probably put this up at around a six or seven. I don't know, what should I do? What should I do, six or seven? Build quality, I think we'll put, you know what? Well, we're gonna give it a six, we're gonna be a little bit conservative. All right? We don't wanna throw points out too fast. All right, now slicing. Slicing for bamboo machines is fantastic. Right? So the Bamboo Studio system is incredible. And also Maker World, being able to open up your phone, go to Maker World, select a model and send it right to your printer is pretty darn nice. So it's probably the best slicing experience that we're going to see uh, for, for quite a while until a lot of companies kind of get in there and then we'll see it push forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a seven um, as far as slicing. And I, I don't think anybody else right now is gonna be getting a seven. Uh, it, the integration is pretty darn nice. Last set of points. We've gone through 34 and now we're on to 30, the 35th point. And that is my impressions of this machine. Now I get to affect the score a little bit. Um, I, can, I can add points or I can remove points based on my overall impression. We've been printing with this machine for quite some time. And overall, it is a really great machine. And I think that this is a fantastic machine for beginners and that this machine ultimately will bring a lot of people into our industry. And I think that that deserves some points. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it an extra five points out of a max of 10 as uh, just an impression that I get from this particular machine. All right, I have all of my scores added up. 104 is how I scored the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. Now, hopefully you were following along. If you weren't, down there in the description, click on that link uh, print it out or however you want to do it and, and score it yourself and then tell me in the comments below what you think of my score and how it compared to yours. Share your score. Also, jump in our Discord. I'll have a link on the screen for that. That's a loyal.ms slash Discord. We'll have more information over there including more scores uh, of different 3D printers and even comparisons. All right, now what does a score of 104 mean? Well, it's really simple. As a comparison, the Prusa Mini, the non-input shaping version, had a score of 60 Two. Now that's quite a big difference, but there's a reason for that. So the Prusa Mini, although it is a fantastic printer and we'll have a content on that soon, it just doesn't have the feature set of the A1 Mini. Now I invite you to go and download that form. It's in the description and you can use that to score printers yourselves. Now I'm a pretty tough scorer and uh, so my numbers are gonna be a little bit lower than yours I imagine, but you can go use that same form and score any 3D printer and use it as a comparison to the ones that we do here on this channel. 
I hope you enjoyed this content. It's a little bit of fun for me to be able to do this and it's gonna be helpful for those of you who are trying to figure out exactly what printers at what price points are gonna be good or bad, right? So hopefully we'll find machines that are very similar in score but vastly different in price and it'll help you out. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content and we will see you in the next one.